So today I've met up with Faith again one week after the last time and we've come to this converted motel uh, made into artist studios not far from the downtown east side and Faith is part of this downtown east side artist collective in one of the rooms here so we're going to go in there pretty soon and see what's happening. Take a look at her art and meet some of the other artists, perhaps. And uh, that's what's happening today. So really looking forward to seeing how this all goes. There it is. All right, Faith. Yeah, this is the um, the art show, uh, art gallery for the Downtown East Side Artists Collective. Um, and it's downstairs here at the Motor Hotel on Main Street in Vancouver. And I've been doing art since I was three years old. My dad has every single piece of art I've ever made. And I never thought I'd make money off of it. And this has been something that's just started in the last year. But I've been putting out art for 10 years down here. I'm going to myself. Yeah, everybody has their own um, area where their artwork is. A lot of these people are friends of mine. And uh, this is uh, my artwork right here. Some of it's uh, mixed meat. I like that one. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's just a very different. That's more my spray paint like, style. You know, this one I named after my mother because a lady looks like my mother. The colors I get. Like, cause I can see like, the orange is like, like a And she wanted to have a comic right? book character. Yeah, yeah. Named yeah, after her, so that's kind of her comic yeah. book world. Right. Yeah. 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 Other planetary yeah. world. Yeah. 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 And she yeah. loves lotus flowers. Um, so this is my downtown okay. east side uh, one. Yeah. Those are actual baggies that used to have my drugs in and the foil that I used to use. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty interesting. Super downtown east side. <laughs> Yeah, and there's a lot of poems. I even have part of my uh, morphine script on there. This one is also really nice. Yeah, and then this one is um, a romance that I did. Uh, more of my paintings got sold. This is more of my mixed media stuff. Yeah, super uh, cool. So you've been selling quite a few recently, right? Yeah. This one's uh, in the moment, and this one's in the machine. Yeah, yeah, he's got a real consistency that's so, 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 like, different, but similar. This one is reserved for a lovely lady named Erin. She's awesome. She bought um, two pieces of me, and she wanted a custom made uh, early Quinn. Mm -hmm. So you just did that one today, right? Yeah. yeah. I went almost on his website, and um, his Instagram and Facebook. So, so how often do you work on art? Um, I try to work on it every day if I can. Wow, that's quite an impressive big piece here. Well, I don't really want to come about, like, once, kind of, like, fairly. That's right. But I have all the accounts of this art or post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and I find that doing art um, helps me put things that are going on with me, just vomit out onto a canvas and get it out of me. Because a lot of people down where we live, we don't really talk about stuff. We kind of, you know, I was told at a young age by this guy, um, uh, don't cry because you know what uh, nobody cares about your fucking crying so um, shut the fuck up and so I stopped crying after that and I held stuff in this was a brother-in-law of mine and um, yeah and so I started holding in because I was like he's right nobody does care and so this is kind of how I deal with the, my emotions and stuff as I put it into my artwork I never know what I'm gonna make it just kind of happens as I'm doing it yeah. yeah, a lot of these people in here, um, artists or friends of mine, they do beautiful work and um, they're awesome people. They work with me at Ops. The other day I was at work and I was saying, this guy called me over because this girl was ODing 
And um, so I bring the oxygen tank and the no oxygen. And I, um, I helped the girl that's OD, and her boyfriend stole my phone <laughs> while I was helping her and bringing her back to life. She's alive, she's fine. My st phone oh, got stolen okay. though. <laughs> oh, so that's the price. <laughs> yeah, okay, but oh. I still do my work. I've had to replace four phones in one month, but I still love the work that I do. It's just a phone. Um, I've never lost anybody yet. Um, I've walked up on people that were already dead, um, seen, seen that, but um, I've never lost anybody that's OD'd. Oh, wow. Yeah. Gosh, so it's just, can you put a number on how many people you've helped by now, sort of, like how many a week or a month, generally? A week? I'd say just hundreds over over time. Okay. Um, a week, it's uh, many, many a week. Um, sometimes two or three in one shift. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's quite a bit. Yeah, the other day it was about eight in a shift. Uh, my friend told me, because he worked from open to close, mm. because on welfare week a lot of people don't show up to work. Mm. And from open to close, uh, he said he about eight, uh, that was about two days ago. Yeah. Okay. So I don't even realize how many it is because it's just become the norm to just get up and go with the tank and get to work. Is that sometimes like increases the number when it's like that? The welfare week, week. When, yeah. Yeah, it's right. a lot more on welfare week. Right. Well, thank goodness for that uh, place, wow. Yeah. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, okay. Well, thanks for sharing all that. It's a heavy-duty week, but that's that's how your life's been for quite a while now. Yeah. Right. Since the fentanyl crisis started, because before fentanyl was out, it was heroin, and if there was bad heroin out there, they would get it off the streets immediately. The, the cops would be right on it. And now, it's all bad heroin. It's all bad fentanyl, and it's all out there and there's no heroin out there anymore. <laughs> they have heroin programs, but because we're all addicted to fentanyl, which is like so much stronger, it doesn't do anything anyways. And no one's working to get the fentanyl off the streets, or what's happening there? You said they were working to get heroin off the street right away, but what's um, the difference No, between it looks fentanyl? like it's here to stay. Oh. Yeah, it looks like it's here to stay. Um, I don't know why. Um, maybe uh, population control, who knows, uh, gentrification, cleaning up the poor neighborhood. Yeah, that's what's going on in the downtown east side is gentrification. I looked it up. I wanted to know what was happening in the neighborhood I lived in. It's where they cleanse the poor neighborhood and open up shops um, and, you know, coffee shops and Make whatnot. Make it up yeah. It's like the last bit of uh, real estate left in Vancouver. And it's um, it's expensive real estate. So this is a, one of the richest um, cities in the world, and so that's my guess on why what's going on. It's uh, you you would think they would house people and stuff like that, but I think that the, the numbers of people are so big they had. That's just a guess. I'm not saying the government's murdering you know, liars or whatever, but I don't know. I don't know. It's just I've lost so many people in my life. It's, it's just you start to wonder. Right. Yeah. 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 A lot of people trying to figure it out. What is it that's happening down there? I'm hoping the, a lot a lot of the people are housed, but it's just with the number of memorials. We have to have a specific day every week at work on Tuesday where we hold a memorial because that's how many people are dying. Yeah, the day I was there helping out, there was a memorial. And that's every Tuesday. because, And the numbers are so much more than that. In the last week, I've lost about five friends. In the yeah. last week? Five yeah, friends? five friends. Yeah. Since I last saw you. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and there's not even enough time to have memorials for all those people. Like, because we only have one day a week where we do it, but so I kind of have my own little thing I do where I just kind of talk to my friends as if they're there, but kind of like a prayer almost or whatever well, well, for them. Sounds like it'd be almost impossible to like, but it's so many people, it's hard, yeah, it's hard to keep up.
you make relationships, you spend time with these people, and then they're gone one day. And it's just uh, so much grief. Um, I started learning about the stages of grief because I could tell that something was happening with myself and a lot of other people and that we are going through mass grief. And there might need to be grief canceling, counseling or something. For oh, yeah. Even as a society, not just in the downtown east side, but I mean, so many families are affected by it, uh, loved ones, um, everybody's affected by it. That's why I sent you um, my picture um, I did of uh, Overdose Awareness Day, and it was um, a coffin shape, and it was on a mirror, because I wanted people in the gallery to see in the mirror that it affects everybody. And um, it had people signing loved ones' names all over the mirror. So that was my overdose awareness day oh. um, art that I did. Yeah, I think I it was. It. Yeah, and I sent you pictures of it. Just a statement of the mirror that it affects everybody, and then just all the loved ones. And when I had that in there, that was the first gallery show I ever did. And I, I a tear came to my eye when I saw people taking pictures in the mirror because I was like, oh my gosh, it got to people, you know, that, that it meant something to somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll definitely put in a picture of that for sure. Yeah, yeah and that's my editing. It's nice when it means something to somebody or they appreciate it. People show me that they appreciate it and love something I do. I, most of the time I just give it to them because wow. they like it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah seem pretty generous. Because it affects, it has affected them or they, it's touched them in a way that maybe um, their perspective on it is different than mine. Uh, and I love to hear what uh, people's take on my paintings are. Like Jezre said she loved the stairs in the side of this one, the stairs in the pillar. And I didn't even do that on purpose. I did that on accident. So she put it on the side. It's so cool that that was her perspective on it. And so, uh, That's yeah. a pretty nice stairs and pillar, I have to say. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, very cool. Like I said, I'm in a different world when I'm doing this stuff. And so that's why I like to to hear people's perspective on it because uh, it's it's interesting. Right. Yeah, you never know what, what comes up for you and for others. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. And, thank you. And, and things you've said, that's hard, hard topic. So. Oh, thanks. Appreciate you sharing and maybe we we'll have to take a little break and give you a hug. For a oh, okay. <laughs> some harsh, uh, harsh realities yeah. that you're constantly facing.